Welcome back to Guru Beauty. I am Jodi and today I'm sharing with you my initial thoughts on the new Bold Metals range of brushes from Real Techniques. This is a newly released line of what's now seven brushes and they're available exclusively right now at Ulta and at Boots and the videos that I've seen from the Chapman ladies, Sam and Nick from Pixie Woo, who are the creators of the Real Techniques line, have said that they are working diligently to try and increase distribution globally for these brushes. So I think stay tuned. I think you will be able to source these brushes online or in store wherever you may be around the world. These brushes have been set apart from the normal Real Techniques range. First thing you'll notice is that the price point of these brushes are certainly higher than the normal Real Techniques brushes. I will say that I adore the Real Techniques brushes. I think that they represent fantastic value and they cover a very broad range of needs in terms of makeup brushes. I would thoroughly recommend them for anyone who's getting started in makeup or you know wanting a decent brush as they learn to apply makeup they are really just a fantastic line I have reviewed many brushes in the Real Techniques line and it's one of my most popular videos on this channel I will include a link to that down below and I will also tell you that there is a link down below for a discount code for the website iHerb. iHerb does sell Real Techniques brushes, not the bold metals ones yet, but stay tuned. I'm sure that they will be involved in distribution of these just as soon as possible. And uh, the discount code down below is for first time users of that website. They do sell Real Techniques brushes for about a half to a third of the prices that we are asked to pay in store here in Australia. So certainly do check that out. Now, onto the bold metals brushes. As I said, they have released seven brushes. I will also include a link down below in the description bar to a playlist that shows Nick Chapman actually talk about each of the brushes and how they recommend you use them. A few notes about the Real Techniques brushes besides the fact that they are a little bit more expensive. They are designed for more of the professional makeup artist, the more discerning makeup um, user or collector you will notice that they are certainly heavier they do have metal handles which does make them heavier and more weighted and that is part of the use and the precision that you will get out of these brushes they are all synthetic and they are for the most part white I used mine today they are not completely cleaned at all but some of them do certainly have sort of color bleeding intentionally coming from the ferrule up into the white synthetic fiber of the brush you'll also notice that there is a a range of different metals involved in the bold metals collection we have a couple rose gold we have a few silver and we have a couple gold handles as well another thing you'll note and that I like about this collection is the actual tapered handle you see the bottom of them all are all thinner and they claim that that is going to make it much easier for a makeup artist to pull out of their pro belt also it's going to make them easier to store so even for the home user the consumer out there like me this is much more preferable to the fat bottom that the Real Techniques line has. They have a rubberized fat bottom. It makes them very difficult to, you know, fit a decent amount in a little container on your counter and they just don't work well together. These will store very nicely together in a container. So I really like that. Now I will include prices down below for you. If you want to see what I think about each of these individual seven brushes in the collection and also see them in action, keep on watching. First up, I'm going to start with this brush. This is the Arched Powder Brush. They say that it has a domed cut that sweeps perfectly across the face for flawless application of pressed or loose powders. You'll see how I use that today. I do like the shape of it. It is definitely soft and um, a pleasure to use on the face. I found that it applied powder very nicely for me today and um, certainly not scratchy for me. They do say that it is weighted for optimal control and comfort and I found that it was definitely soft, not too scratchy on the face, a really nice one to apply powder and um, you can certainly use the tapered edge as well. You'll see it has an oval shape. You can use that for contouring contouring underneath the jawline you can use it for sweeping bronzer on you know down your decolletage area it's sort of large enough for that but then it's also got a nice sort of flat side as well for how I prefer to apply a powder to set my foundation and that's in a tapping motion so I really like the shape of this that it is tapered it does have a nice 
flat side that is soft to use but then even when you do use it on the edge it is still nice and soft so I really do like this brush the 100 arched powder brush I definitely would uh, recommend that one now on to probably the most interesting brush this one probably has the most attention out of the line this is called the 101 triangle foundation brush mine of course has foundation on it but you'll see when I hold it at a cross section that it is a triangular tip they say that this has a dual function it has a flat edge here to cover large areas of the face and angled edges here to contour around the eyes and the nose so you've got that sort of little corner area you can contour a little bit more easily there and there I found that to be not really noticeably a big benefit when I was using it I think that with most sort of paddle type brushes because of the shape of them you can very easily get into contoured areas anyway so I do find the triangular shape to be honest to be a little bit of a gimmick I don't know if I would recommend this one I probably have other foundation brushes that I honestly do prefer now moving on to the number 200 this is the oval shadow brush and it's a full round shape that allows for an all over lid application and seamless blending I did use this for my eye primer my Mac paint pot I also used it for under eye concealer and I did also use it for pressing my eyeshadow onto the lid area I found that it performed all three of those functions very very well so this is one again with synthetic bristles that's going to perform very well whether it's with cream or if it's with powder again if you have a powder that you're working with that needs to be wet this is also going to be a great brush for that I did find that this was definitely soft on the under eye area I can't stand a scratchy brush under there and I do really like this one I feel like it's certainly got enough firmness to really press a product in as well as to work a product in if you are applying a primer or a concealer it does have a tapered edge and it covers a nice amount of area all at once too so I do definitely like this brush next is probably my least favorite of the eye brushes this is the 201 pointed crease brush it is densely packed it has tapered bristles that come to a point at the end the idea being that you can very easily you know work your crease area you can certainly blend more precision areas but then because it is a little bit fatter as well you can blend and feather those lines that you've created out depending on how much product you use you could also use it clean to blend out I found that this was just I don't know for my purposes for my crease it worked okay it just wasn't all that comfortable I prefer something just a little bit looser something that's not quite as dense not quite as stiff this just does not move much at all if anything this would probably be okay for applying a cream product but again I'd prefer something like their oval shadow brush to do that so this is not one of my favorite brushes the pointed crease I just feel like if I want a pointed brush I would prefer something smaller like a Mac 219 for smudging I think this is just a little bit too big for what to me is ideal and you know for outer crease work it's just a little bit too stiff and dense for my liking so this is not a brush that I'm a big fan of next one the 202 angled liner brush this is a very narrow angled liner brush and that's going to be really really precise this is a brush that performed very well for me not only in sort of smudging out liner liquid liner with a powder shadow it works very well for that it also would work very well for applying product to the tight line and waterline area so definitely a great liner brush a great smudging brush as well I found that because it is sort of so narrow on that angled length I could also sort of use it on its side just to blend in that lower lash line as well also a nice brush for applying or pressing in any sort of pigment or highlight to the inner corner of your eye very very, very precision and I did use this on my brows today and I really quite enjoyed it for that purpose as well so I do quite like the 202 angled liner brush next we have the 300 tapered blush brush and this is a real workhorse as far as the face brushes go from this collection I really like this one for the softness that it has the shape that it has the fact that it does come up to a tapered tip also makes it very very versatile so you'll see how I use this one to apply not only a powder 
just to tap on on my under eye area this is definitely soft enough to not irritate or pull or scratch that area very nice for that also a very very nice brush for applying pressed or loose powders just to show you how it compares to the larger powder brush that's the two of them together so this is a nice one for sort of you know all over but then this blush brush and the shape of it makes it very very nice for more precision powder application you can if you're just doing your t-zone for example keep it very precise where you're popping your powder if you want to leave the rest of your face unpowdered for example also a very very nice brush for contouring you see that the shape of it certainly is more oval so you really can get into that area underneath your cheekbone you can certainly blend it up nicely this way as well because it is tapered on the sides very very nice for contouring also very nice for highlighting because you've got that tapered tip you can apply the tiniest amount of product to the very tip of the brush and highlight here finally as per its original intended use blush this is a great brush for blush I can never say those two words together but you can apply it you know in a very small amount if you've got a cream blush or a very very pigmented blush and then this brush is also going to do the blending for you as well if you want a um, bigger area covered you can use the side of the brush just a fantastic brush that you use sort of on three different planes you've got the flat side for powder or for larger areas of blush you've got the side that angled side there which is great for contouring or for more precision blush application and then you've got the tip that tapered pointed tip I love the shape of this brush for really precise application so a real fantastic workhorse of a brush I really really like this one this is probably my favorite from the whole collection the number 300 blush brush final brush this is the 301 flat contour brush you can see that it has a square shape to it very flat cut there on the edge you can get the idea of the shape of it there it's quite thick but this is going to be your contouring brush I use this today not only for a cream contour as you can see there it does work very well to place the product again under that cheekbone area and then it's very very dense but yet soft to use the edge and blend it up this is similar to the Illamasqua push-up brush also NARS Ita brush very different feel I would say and different look but similar shape and same sort of use I did also use this with a powder today and again same it works very well with cream or powder I was able to place it under the cheekbone and blend it up its footprint is big enough to cover larger areas if you are just wanting to you know warm up and contour the edges of your forehead it does have the density to get you know into your hairline for example if you're blending there but then also you know cover larger areas as you go so it is a nice shape brush I would recommend this one I did enjoy using it I think it's definitely a worthwhile addition to the collection so that's it I think I already said when I was talking about it but I do feel like the 300 tapered blush is my favorite from the whole collection the shape every bit of it is just beautiful I would recommend that uh, others that are noteworthy I do quite like this powder brush I would recommend that I did quite like the angled liner brush this oval shadow brush for me it's a take it or leave it I think if you have other brushes like this you certainly don't need this one it's not particularly special or a must have but if you don't have a brush like this you know you can use it cream powder lid under eye and uh, you may find it quite handy I feel like this is not a must have so I'm kind of on the fence about that the contour brush is a nice addition to the collection and I do feel like the triangle foundation brush and the pointed crease brush they are misses for me so that is my recommendation from the bold metals collection from real techniques please do let me know your experience and your thoughts if you have tried Tried any of these brushes I would love to hear from you or if you've got your eye on any of these particular brushes also definitely let me know thank you so much for watching have yourself a gorgeous gorgeous day don't forget you are beautiful yes you are but don't just look it make sure you be it too have a great day and we'll see you again really really soon bye